Thank you, Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Well, welcome. Welcome to Cornerstone's 34th anniversary celebration. We're so glad that you're here. And I'm here with my wife, Terry. Hi. We're excited that Terry's <laughs> here. And with Norma. Yay! Norma Bixler. Hallelujah. I think, I think the Holy Spirit's here, too. I know the Holy <laughs> Spirit is here. Amen. That was a beautiful song. He, amen. It was beautiful. I, I, I think that you two ladies share something in common. Green. Well, no, we are no. other than green. <laughs> We're green with envy. Uh, you, you share the fact that that is one of your favorite songs. It yes, is. It's it, your is. Song. Yes, it, it is. Yes, it's mine. It is. I, know, I love it. And I've got to say, I've never heard anybody quite sing it like that. Oh, it was beautiful. I heard Dean and Mary sing that years ago in Canada, and I said to them, will you please come to Pittsburgh? And they've been coming ever since. Oh, Praise God. Awesome. It was beautiful. It was Hallelujah. Totally anointed. It was so anointed. It felt like the angels were here. It, 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 it was a wonderful thing. And we're so glad. I guess I don't have to introduce it. That is Dean and Mary Brown are back, back with us. 
uh, from, after a, a considerable uh, absence, we're so glad, and I just met him, so praise God. Mm -hmm. And we're here with friends tonight in, in, in the studio, so glad you're here with us. Amen. I just want to introduce tonight, tonight's a celebration Amen. of God's victory and his, his, his wonderful pouring out of his grace on Cornerstone. Amen. We're going to tell the story of Cornerstone in a little bit of the Cornerstone. We can't tell 34 years of it. We're going to share <laughs> some, some video from the past. We're going to talk about what God has done. We've got some more special music, and tonight... We've got, uh, we've got some sp a special time that we're going to do in ministry. And I wanted to start tonight, guys, with that. We didn't plan for this, but today in Boston, there was a, there was a bombing. And you're at home watching this. You know about it. If you don't know about it, there was a bombing in Boston. We're not here to report that because we're not in the reporting business. We're in the ministry business. We're here to pray. And what happened in Boston today is an attack of the spirit. It's not an attack of the flesh. He uses bodies to do what he wants to do, but this is a spiritual warfare. And what happened there today is to inflict fear and to intimidate and to cause uh, people to be uh, afraid of what the future holds. Not just in Boston, but in all of the country. And not just in the country, but in the world. Yeah. So what do we do about it as, as Christians? You can turn on about every channel on, the new, on television tonight and see a reporting of it. Do a wonderful job. But tonight, we're going to be praying about that. So I want to start tonight in prayer. So let's, let's pray together right now for God's peace and his, his will. Lord, we come to you in Jesus' name. Yes, we thank you, God, that you're not surprised by what happened in Boston today. That's not a surprise to you, God. You are the author of what is our faith and our stand in faith against the powers of the devil, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray that justice will be done in, in, in this attack. And that, Lord, that you'll speak peace upon this whole situation in Jesus' name. God, you'll use it for good. You promised that you'll use it for good. And God, we thank you, God, that we could trust in you. And to tonight, Lord, in the hearts of the men and women, boys and girls in Boston that have lost a loved one or their loved ones in the hospital because they were hurt, that they will be comforted, Holy Spirit. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, let's get, let's get on with the party. Uh, we're gonna, we want to show you a video, the Russ and Norma story. So stay, we'll be right back. Cornerstone Television began with nothing more than a word from God given to a simple pastor's wife. I was just sitting there and God just began to speak. I mean, it was just that simple. And he said, I want you to go home and tell Russell, and I want you to, to build a station like this for me. And I, I, I was overwhelmed. I mean, can you imagine God saying something like that to you? Well, that's what he said to me. And I couldn't absorb it. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't understand it. We began to share with people the vision. Some people thought it was a really wonderful idea. Others thought it was a waste of time and money. And but we knew God had spoken to us. I argued with God, which is a silly thing to do. I mean, after all, he's God. And I'm his kid. And uh, I said, well, we don't know anybody that has any money. And we sure don't have any money. We were. Russell was pastor of a tiny church, and nobody in that church was a, what you would call a wealthy person. And we didn't associate with the wealthy people in Pittsburgh, uh, not because we didn't like them, we just, we just didn't. And I thought, where in the world would we get the money to build a station? That was my, one of my first thoughts. And God said, the money's there. I thought, well, if he's God, I guess he knows. Money or not, the Lord had spoken and many Christians in Western Pennsylvania recognized the hand of God. Even so, the obstacles were enormous. The uh, satanic attacks were incredible. We were, we were sued in federal court. We were petitioned against at the Federal Communications Commission. Uh, we had an explosion fire just a month or a month and a half before we were due to go on the air. The insurance company ripped us off to the tune of about $100,000. Uh, we had... Um, there were letters circulating about the lies that Russ Bixler was telling. And the interesting thing is, the ironic and beautiful thing is, how the Spirit of God uses time to heal all things. 
the day we went on the air, every accusation against me was laid to rest. Meanwhile, Norma gathered together seven women to pray the station on the air. When we started, there was a hill, and it was overgrown, and there were trees, there wasn't a road, there wasn't anything. And so it, this was a real pioneer job. Fully 10 years passed between the time God gave the vision to Norma and Russ Bixler and the station began operating. But God had spoken. On April 15, 1979, WPCB-TV began broadcasting Christian programming in Pittsburgh. And he worked on it. We were due to go on at 2. We made it at 3.30. And we, we got knocked off the air a number of times but in those early weeks, but we got on to stay. Since then, God has continued to have his hand on Cornerstone Television. In 1985, through the prayers and financial support of viewers in the Pittsburgh area, WKBS-TV 47 went on the air, broadcasting around-the-clock Christian television to central Pennsylvania from Altoona. What, what, a, what a thrill to see video from those early days. Oh, my. <laughs> what do you think? Well, I think God's good, and he's taken care of us for 34 years. Oh, yes. And the one thing I want to say, if I don't say anything else, is, you know, today, uh, I don't know if people would have responded as they did way back. I mean, I just don't know. But people were excited, and they gave money when there wasn't anything to look at. Wow. Because, first of all, we had to build the station. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if you buy something at the store, you want to take it home and have it. Right. Well, they just had to give it and trust God along with us. That, so that was a real faith pledge for them. It, it was. It was. Do you have any special memories that, when you see that, that it, that it brings about? Gee, we don't have all night. <laughs> <laughs> you got memories for a minute? <laughs> Well, uh, we, were, we had an explosion in fire in the fall. We, had, we were going to go on the air, and that's another whole story. And then we, th we got all these things ready to go on the air, and then the temperature dropped, and the pipes broke, <gasps> and the water flowed. Oh, no. That happened. <laughs> and Harold McCamish, who was on our board at the time, saw to it that those leaks were fixed and then we were so happy that the <laughs> leaks were fixed and we're now we're really going to go on the air we're going to be on there at two o'clock I, I know a lot of you don't know this and I don't know much about television either but you have to have an exciter you know to get started I thought that was your job <laughs> <laughs> and we had we had the exciter, it was, and it wouldn't excite. <laughs> it wouldn't work. And I mean, you can laugh now, but that day wasn't funny at all. <laughs> so we had an extra one. So we thought, good, we'll get that, and we'll put that in, and it'll all work. Well, we put it in, and it didn't work. And we had two exciters, and they wouldn't work, oh, and they were man. brand new. So we called a neighboring station, and we said, would you come over here and See what you could do to help. Oh, they were so nice. They came up. They couldn't do anything either. It just, wasn't, it just wouldn't work. So what I said was, we got to pray. And we got to <laughs> praise the Lord. We need to praise the Lord. And so the people that were here was the board members and a few other people. Henry Harrison was here. And, uh, and so we just uh, we got in that little room and we praised the Lord. We kind of really got carried away praising the Lord. And the next thing... The exciter started to work, and we wow. went on the air. Hallelujah. Awesome. <laughs> That's a testimony. That's great. That's awesome. Well, the, the, the testimonies of st the way God used staff, and in mm -hmm. that case, supernaturally used staff. <laughs> yes, that's right. We have, a, we have a story from a staff, some, some of our staff members that we want to show you. Before I came to Cornerstone Television, I had been a nun for 14 years. I started to work here in June of 1979. And during that time, um, one of my concerns was when I left the convent was that I wouldn't have a family 
that I would be alone. Russ and Norma took me in as their family member. And that's one thing the Cornerstone Television has always been. It's family. And that's what we want to prompt people to be. Followers, doers of the word, but part of a wonderful family that is Cornerstone Television. I am actually in this book. I met Russ and Norma Bixler at a church I used to be the organist for in Duquesne one Sunday evening. And after the service was over with, I walked up to Russ and I said, I hear you have started a TV station and I just came out of college. My background is in broadcast television now, so I was looking to get some work. And uh, he said, oh really? And he reached in his pocket, I never will forget it, he reached into his jacket pocket, pulled his notepad out and wrote down my name and phone number. I started doing camera work back in December 1980. The one story that I remember about Russ, he used to take me home because I didn't have a car. One night when he took me home, he gave me a brand new wallet. And uh, he said, I pray God bless your finances with this wallet so that you never want for anything financially. My wallet has been blessed with finances ever since. So um, I'm thankful to God for that and thankful for being able to meet my needs in this ministry over the past 33 years. In October of this year, I'll have worked at Cornerstone Television for 34 years. Coming out of high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do and I prayed and prayed that God would show me. And this girl I knew started working at Cornerstone Television. She told me they were hiring for a camera operator. So I came down and I had 15 minutes training and I was on live TV that night. Just when I was getting proficient on camera, the audio man left. So I was the new audio man. So I'm thankful to God that as a young man having no idea what I wanted to do, God knew that he had a plan for me that I would be the audio engineer and uh, it's very fulfilling and I love the job and couldn't have thought of anything else I'd want to do with my life. But he has a plan for good and not for evil, for not just for me, but for everyone out there. And I'm thankful to him for that. Cornerstone is blessed with a phenomenal staff. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm new, I'm three months, Terry and I are three months on the, on the job. But, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, Half of our staff has been with the ministry for over 20 years, so we're really blessed. Yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. And 20% of, of you guys have been here 30 years. Mm -hmm. So that's a legacy. Amen. And you saw three of the stories of legacy. God took people, put them here. God brought you guys to Cornerstone. How many years ago, Dean, when oh you my. first got involved? Um, I don't know what year. Well, what, what, I think it's 30. 83, you think? 82, okay, 82, yeah. yeah. Paul and Faye weren't even married then, but that was our, probably our first time. We were here like a year before Drew was born, so. Yeah, their, their son, who's now 20. So how old is the son? 28 years Drew. old now. Okay, okay wow. so 30 years. It's been a long wow. time. Yeah, okay. I knew it was 30 all the time. <laughs> yeah. was 30 years. Yeah. Well, we're glad that you've been yeah, here, and we're definitely. glad you're with us tonight. It's, Thank you. It's a blessing. Tell us, it's been a year since you've been, yep. just about a year. Yeah. Tell us about what, what's, what God's been doing in, in your ministry, in your life. Well, uh, to be honest with you, everything came to a complete halt the last time we were here. I, we discovered it, Mary, I don't want to take all the time. No, it's one year ago. It's, it's almost to the day one year ago since we were here, and, and that was our last, I think, except mm -hmm. for a church in Memphis, that was our last time. I knew at that time when we were here, April or whatever, a year ago, that cancer was back. I knew that then. Chemo started shortly thereafter, and uh, don't do that. You, we, we, you don't do that. So, and then uh, surgery after five months of chemo, and uh, we were down for uh, in the house. I mean, and we're like multi-million mile flyers, so you don't keep people like that in the house for 14 months. But wow. we stayed in the house, and I was in the bed, and Mary was praying. With no hair. With no hair, <laughs> that's right. Well, Mary had her hair, yeah. but uh, <laughs> I, I lost my hair. But anyway, that's and, it, and it's something. Whenever the doctor looks at you and says you have cancer, the first thing we say is, "Am I going to lose my hair?" <laughs> you know. You also lost thirty pounds. <laughs> yeah, wow. but you know, God. I mean, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I I did wonder along the way. And, how, and how, do, how do you feel me. today? I feel great. I'm great. Glad, <laughs> glad to be here. I'm strong. Well, you're, you're never watching you sing that, that Hallelujah Chorus. I'm not 
feeling any weakness in that. There was nothing but strength. Yeah. Beautiful. How did you? How did you? How did you meet these 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 folks? How did you meet them? Well, I went to Canada with Russell to 100 Huntley Street, where David Main uh, program was, and they. Uh, I was, I didn't want to go in the makeup room because I heard them rehearsing because they were going to be on the air with Russell. And uh, I was so blessed. I just, after the program, I got Take up my nerve. Take your time, Norma. That's good. That's good. <laughs> and I went over and I said, we just had gotten this studio. And, we, and uh, I just fell in love with them. That's the whole, the whole thing. And I and I love them, and I love their music, and I love the anointing, mm. the power of God that was mm. there. And so I, I just got real bold, and I said, would you come to Pittsburgh? And they said, <laughs> we've never been there. And I said, I know. <laughs> they said, yes, we'll come. Great. And they've been coming ever since. And remember, we came uh, also, I don't know if it was our first time, I think it was the night that you dedicated this studio. It was. This, built, this, this wow. very building, this very, this very room. Yeah. And the electricity didn't work until like, when minutes before. five, four, three, two, one, we're on the air. Remember that? Yeah, television's exciting. <laughs> well, we had, we've had, uh, we did a weekly program uh, for 17, I think, years. Paul Bigsor was over here helping me with my numbers, but I think it was 17 years. We're, 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 we're getting a picture here, aren't we? Now, we keep talking, and I'm sure the, the director's seeing Paul. <laughs> well, Paul, Paul directed our program and, uh, and helped, us, helped us to learn TV and whatever and whatever it was we were supposed to be doing. <laughs> and so for 17 years we did that. Well, you know, we've got a little look backwards. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Never look back. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. We've got a little back, look backwards. Let's, let's, let's look at uh, uh, Dean and Mary through the years. and Mary, two people who are called by God to sing music that ministers. It is written in the word of the Lord, we will stand, we will stand. And Ephesians says, may God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you wisdom to see clearly and really understand who Christ is and all that he has done for you. Lift up your voices oh, oh, and sing your praises, oh, 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 the praises of the Lord. Bell Vernon, Bell Vernon, that Pennsylvania. That? Bell Vernon, Pennsylvania. Let me just uh, share a little bit of what people are sharing uh, with us. A blessing to have you in my home on TV. A greater blessing to hear the word put to music. that you want to help our viewers to begin to understand and learn a little bit about what takes place behind the oh, scenes. Oh, I'm, I'm ready. No. <laughs> What's that guy's name? Dean. Dean. Maybe that's enlightening. And we're not even through yet because oh. Tim and Dean are down at the transmitter building. This is another part of Dean's the operation. There? Yes. Oh, no. Come on, did you get all the snow off this nice, nice little Memphis cinder? This, <laughs> this is the transmitter. This is the transmitter room. Come with me, Tim. This is, this tree, oh, you get this is the transmitter the room over here. I have a couple of questions for you. Look, do you see this? Do you see this, Tim? Do you see this bank of stuff? Tell oh, me about it, Dean. Tell me right about here. it. This is all analog. This is analog. And uh, can I turn the switch? No, 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 no. Bless 
I'm Pastor Gary Simpson from Christian Life Church in Trafford, Pennsylvania. I want to congratulate Cornerstone Television on 34 years of broadcasting in Western Pennsylvania and around the country. Whether it's preaching, teaching, music, or information on issues that are important to Christians and others, CTV is the place to go. God bless you for more than three decades of good ministry and many, many more. So grateful for testimonies like that from Pastor Simpson. And I'm here with Anna Crosby, 94 years young, 95 years young. And uh, you have been uh, a prayer partner. That's it. Give a round of applause. Been a prayer partner for 97 years, right? No, no, no. 27 years, huh? Yeah, 26. And but been involved with Cornerstone Television since yeah, the beginning. Since it began. Now, what do you love about being a prayer partner? I love serving the Lord. That age doesn't mean anything. It's only a number. And I love to talk to people. And oh, I feel so good when I can lead someone to the Lord. That's my life. I enjoy life. <laughs> Has there been anyone in particular, any, any situation in particular that you remember that kind of stands out of 27 years of answering the phones? Well, 
I used to come here. Uh -huh. Sure has changed. Uh -huh. And uh, I am so glad that just two weeks ago, uh, dear lady said, I'd like to know the Lord. I said, oh, good. That's what I like to <laughs> I like to show you who the Lord is. And she, she prayed that sinner's prayer, and she was rejoicing. I said, go on and live for him. You'll end up in the 90s like I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, do you have any idea how many people you may have led to the Lord over 27 years? Well, I don't think I could count them. But taking care of the babies, I took care of foster children for how mm -hmm. long? 34 years. Wow, wow. And 85 of them. That is amazing. It's amazing what, what God has done. And, and uh -huh. would you, is there, is there anything that... that you would regret about all the things that you did for on the phone prayer lines? Well, I accepted the Lord at 13. I could have done it sooner. <laughs> well, I, I think you've got a few a few more years left in you, and so well, you've got to keep answering the phones, okay? Yes, and, and I'm planning on going with the rapture. Amen. Well, uh, speaking of answering the phones, Michelle Newell is over there with one of our, our folks that used to answer the phone here at Cornerstone Television. That's right, Tim. We're here with Rosemary and Frank Musiani. Rosemary, you were with us for 28 years, and Frank, 17 years, right? And you guys met here. Rosemary, what would you like to say to our viewers that they would know you for? Jesus loves you. This is Cornerstone Television. May I help you? I'm sure all of you out there remember that, and you have a special story because the two of you met here, so it's a nice love story. What memory do you have of Cornerstone Television? Well, I would say, aside from meeting Frank and marrying him, um, when I came, I came with an idea, a goal, mm -hmm. to, I wanted to bless other people through Jesus Christ and my life and what he meant to me. Mm -hmm. And um, through the, he blessed me in return through the phone, Amen. the hundreds and probably thousands of people that I was in contact with, not only visiting, but like I said, over the phone, mm -hmm. and he in turn blessed me back. That's right. And Frank, what about you? There are so many fond memories here uh, from the years, but the most of them here is to just have fellowship with most of these beautiful Christian people. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people that have their own families, but this is a family of God here, That's and right. it's been a blessing. And as long as we have a breath in our body, we'll be here. That's all right. Well, we thank both of you for joining us today. And speaking of fellowship, some of you viewers may remember this getting together anthem. This is something that we played years ago, and we hope it brings memories back for you too. When we're faithful, we cannot help but make a positive impact on society, especially when motivated by obedience to God's Word and a desire to please Him. Together, hand in hand, one community at a time, we can reclaim this nation for Christ. We can reestablish our Judeo-Christian heritage, and we can help people come to know Jesus as Savior, Healer, Deliverer, Friend, and Lord. We're sending a message, sharing the light, raising our banner high, and dancing in the power of His mind. Lifting our voice, taking a stand, proclaiming hope throughout our land. Together we're here. With the power from on high. Raising high his signal. This is Cornerstone Television. Raising high his signal. That you know, it just thrills me to think of. From the very first, you know, they, showed, they showed earlier in the, this program, they showed a video from the very first program when Cornerstone went on the air and they showed a table 
with prayer partners sitting at it. And that's really been the heart of the ministry yes. ever since then. We love broadcasting Christian television. We love touching people's lives that way. But you know what? We're so glad to have these prayer partners here, Linda, as a way for them to respond. When someone's touched out there, they can call right here and they can get a prayer or even come to know the Lord, as, as we heard uh, our dear Anna share just oh, earlier. Oh, that was so awesome. You know, we have so many prayer partners like Anna through the years, and we've received over uh, 2 million calls. We've had over wow. 3 million requests for prayers. And you know, Tom, the best is yet to come. Oh, I, I agree 100%. It's going to be exciting to see what the Lord does moving forward. Absolutely. And uh, we want to encourage you, if you'd like to join us as a prayer partner, we need prayer partners at home. And join us in the studio. You can see what a great time we and have here. And if you need prayer right now, guess what? There are prayer partners here. Everybody's right here ready to pray for you. You know, we're celebrating tonight. But tonight could be a night of ministry. Tonight could be a night of you meeting the Lord in a new way. So if you need prayer, maybe you're going through a difficulty, right now you can call the prayer partners and you can see uh, God do something new and, and awesome in your life. So why don't you do that? Right now we're going to go to one woman's story, Kim Wakeham, of how her life was changed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. <laughs> Kim Wakeham enjoys her life as a mother, wife, and successful attorney. But after returning from a family vacation, her life forever changed. I thought I had a sunburn because I was itching a bit. And so I bought some lotion to put on it. And uh, the itching just kept getting worse and worse for a few days. And I thought, this, this doesn't seem right. So finally, I ended up going to the doctor because I just was very concerned about it. After several doctor's visits followed by a biopsy, Kim Wakeham had been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. The rug was pulled out from underneath of me uh, because I worked full time. Um, I have a wonderful husband and, and son and home and everything was just going great, so I thought. Kim began finding encouragement through Cornerstone Television. I started watching Cornerstone Television and Rabbi Landry was on the show, and I watched him. I sat spellbound and watched him. I immediately called um, Cornerstone to pledge support for Cornerstone. Um, that was one of the um, life-changing moments for me. During an aggressive stage of chemotherapy and radiation, Kim's mother suggested she read Fighting Cancer, a book co-authored by Dr. Contreras. Kim was later given an opportunity to be a part of a live studio audience at Cornerstone Television with Dr. Contreras. At that point in time, Dr. Contreras turned the light bulb on for me from the standpoint of, all right, we have to work on the immune system to boost the immune system. So I immediately started doing that, and that's what I've been doing since I um, met with Dr. Contreras. Kim continued to keep her faith in God for a healing. After undergoing surgery, Kim's tumor was successfully removed with no signs of cancer. I was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in September of 2010, and now we're in um, April of 2013, and that's over two and a half years. And as a practical matter, that in and of itself is a miracle. Statistically, I'm not supposed to be here. People that have pancreatic cancer, when they're diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, they may live a few months. I'm here by the grace of God. Kim continues to support Cornerstone Television and remains thankful for programs that have helped change her life. I start each day out with Cornerstone Television. And thinking about Cornerstone Television as I think about it every day, you know, I've tried to think about what does Cornerstone really mean to me? Cornerstone Television is my oasis, the place where I find refuge, safety, and calmness in the midst of everyday life. Wow, what a story. It was awesome. uh, I understand we have a little bit of a kit. Kim, we're glad that you're here with us tonight. And your mom here too. Betty, we're glad that you're here. And I understand there's an update to the story. There is an update to the story. Um, this past week, my husband and I traveled to MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas, where I treat. Uh -huh. And uh, I had CT scans on Thursday, met with my doctor on Friday, 
And uh, Friday morning, the doctor walked into the room and he said, I see nothing. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Amen. Wow. You know, I know it feels wonderful when you hear that, that testimony, and I know that it's been two and a half years of struggling and, and fighting the fight of faith in this, and your mom was saying that it's, you started together in this, and Cornerstone was part of that, and we're excited That's for right. you. Praise, oh, That's praise tremendous. God. I'm very excited. I, I sat there, and I thought to myself, when I first started down this path, my first question to my mother was, why are some people healed and some people are not? And she, she, she directed me to Hosea 4, 6 that says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Mm. Cornerstone has provided me with the knowledge. So now I can say, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the uh, Lord. Amen. 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 We like, to, we like to sum it up the way Andrew Womack does. Believe and receive or doubt and do without. <laughs> <laughs> and we see, we watch, we start our day every day watching Andrew, Andrew on Cornerstone. Oh, oh that's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Well, Betty, do you have something you can add to this story? Let's let your mom say it. You have the last word. It's an awesome story. Yeah. And, and every word of it from the Bible, uh-huh. based on the Bible. Amen. That's right. Amen. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and, and Betty's 90. I will be my birthday. Well, I don't want to get you too far ahead. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pushing 90. <laughs> We're so glad. What a testimony of God's grace and, and, his, and his provision and his healing touch. Amen. If, you're, if you're praying for a miracle tonight, you're standing, and Amen. just as Kim did, standing in faith for God to manifest in your life a miracle. Why don't you call our prayer line and, and ask our prayer partner to pray in agreement with you. It's 888 888- 665-4483, 888-665-4483, and just say, I want you to pray with me. That's why we're here. We're here to pray. We're here to believe with you. And when you're weak, we want to stand with you. When you're strong, we want you to stand with somebody else. That's okay. why you can partner with Cornerstone and be, uh, be part of this ministry. 34 years of ministry. We're excited. Thank you for coming and yes, sharing that right. testimony. Thank you. We, we, we have a package of, of testimonies and that, that started, see, this whole thing started with a covenant that, that Russ Bixler made to, the, to his partners. Mm-hmm. And we think it's an important covenant. We want you to see this because it stands true. What, what he shares stands true. So please, uh, we'll be right back. I've been asking you to make a pledge, a covenant, with your Christian television ministry. But first, I'm going to make a pledge, a covenant with you. As president of Cornerstone Television, I pledge to you that this ministry will bring you the best of Christian television. We will provide this programming round the clock, morning, noon, and night. Whenever you happen to tune in, your Christian station will be there. This we covenant to do for you. I pledge further to maintain a continuing search for the best Christian programs. We have been conducting this search for many years and it will continue. I promise you that to the best of our ability, these programs will be clean and wholesome. You need never be ashamed of watching this TV station. If something unpleasant sneaks through, I promise that we will work to correct the situation as soon as possible. I pledge to you that the programs we produce here and as much as is possible, those programs produced by other ministries will maintain biblical standards. We will not compromise biblical standards of theology or morality, but rather we will expose the unfruitful works of darkness. Whatever God is doing, we plan to be doing also. I covenant with you that Cornerstone Television will bring you truth in the midst of a deceived world. We will bring you love to shine forth in the darkness of hatred. We will bring you genuine hope to sparkle out of the chaos of false hopes being offered by the rulers of this world. This is our covenant with you, no matter what the rest of the television industry does. Time and time again in the past, to our own financial injury, we have refused to lower these standards. We pledge to you that we will maintain such standards. I make a further covenant with you 
that a phone prayer partner will, to the best of our ability, be reachable by telephone. We pledge to love you, to pray for you, to rejoice in your miracles, and to comfort you in your sorrows. We pledge further to believe God with you for the special miracle you need. We will believe God with you for your loved ones. This is our covenant with you. I pledge to you that we will do our best with the resources God gives us to provide diverse programs for all segments of the body of Christ. We will be truly ecumenical. I covenant with you that we will be good stewards of the gifts you provide for this ministry. We will use those funds to seek the lost, to strengthen the believer, and to provide wholesome entertainment for everyone. This is our promise to you. I pledge to you that we will continually work to express the love of God through Jesus Christ as we are empowered by His Holy Spirit. Thus, we will say and do those things which are helpful and hopeful. We will love you. This is the covenant we make with you as you provide the financial support for this ministry. Russ's covenant is so powerful because what it does is it describes the commitment that Cornerstone had at its birth to being truthful and authentic, mm -hmm. right. to being Bible-based and not and, and to be based on the Holy Spirit. And that okay. that that is still in place. So nothing has changed in 34 years. Where you say, "Wow, lot, something has to change in 34 years." The only thing has changed is the method. Right. It's the method. The message has stayed the same, and it's, it will remain the same because it's based on the Word of God. We're excited about that. And there's a foundation, Russ and, and Norma laid a wonderful foundation. I'm, and I'm so thankful that Terry and I have the, the opportunity mm -hmm. to build on this foundation. But there's some other people who've laid part of that foundation that we need to recognize them and the contribution that they've made in leadership and to bringing Cornerstone mm -hmm. to this place. Olene Eagle did a phenomenal job leading yes, and, and organizing. And I didn't know Olene, so I didn't have that privilege, but I've heard wonderful stories about her leadership and the way she's planted here. And then Ron, Ron Hembry, I only had the opportunity to meet him in passing at one of our conventions, and I didn't really have the chance to meet with him personally, but the testimony that, he is, that follows him is incredible, and all that he has done in teaching and preaching the Word of God and, and the laying that foundation. Now, here we build on that foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not something that that is starting from scratch. It's, it's the work of God. And Cornerstone is moving forward, and we're moving forward in the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We're not going to take the message of God and compromise it. We're going to make sure that we stay true to it. As uh, We don't need entertainment in this world anymore. We've got 500 channels on television, but how many channels do we have that proclaim the truth of the Word of God? That's right. How That's many right. are there? I don't know. There's some, and, but I am so thankful that Cornerstone will not divert from that. We're going to stay focused on that, and, and we want to be focused, too, on the power of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We, we're, we just don't want to be hearers of the Word. We want to be doers. We want to demonstrate the power of God. We will follow the, the Great Commission. We're committed to the Great Commission. The Great Commission is what Jesus gave the church as his last commandment. And in the military, when you get your last commandment, you stay on that commandment to one, it's finished, or two, you're reassigned. Well, the church hasn't been reassigned, and the, and, and the job's not finished. Mm -hmm. So we keep moving in that direction. We build and work to build a local church. We have many pastors here with us tonight. We're not in competition. Television is not in competition with the pastor. We're partners with the pastor mm -hmm. to go into the living rooms and into the iPhones and into the iPads in, in the viewers and bring this truth to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the viewer. So God, help us to walk in the Spirit. And I, I, want, I want you to pray for us. I want to ask you to pray for Cornerstone as we go into the next 34 years. Of course, we're not going to wait 34 years to celebrate. Let's, we'll celebrate a lot, a lot sooner. In fact, we're going to celebrate next year, the 35th, in, a, in grand style. We're going to invite you to be part of that. So with, with, with a smile on her face and, 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 and fear in the hearts of some of the people in, this, in the audience, we've got a little bit of a, of a look back on, on video, Norma, <laughs> <laughs> that we want to roll. So roll that footage. But you know what? It's from Steve. It's my mom. And oh. your dad. Hey. Hey, mom. You know what? Dad. You know what? We thank you so much for this pledge. But we thank you. Now, where's the camera? I want it on me. Say, 
I love Dean and Mary Brown. Okay, <laughs> don't you? Yeah, that's it. I know you did. So send uh, send those uh, pledges in right. and uh, for the children. Okay, you want to go sing for us? Whoa, I'm leaving. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Oh, dear ones, lift up your hands. And uh, three, two, one. Today's reading is from Hosea chapter 6, verse 6. I don't... <laughs> house to your house. Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. <laughs> no, when you have a producer. It seems like you two are so well adjusted. I mean, I, I, I hear, you know, I hear all the traumatic reports about. Uh, and the telephone is area 4112 8243. No, but listen, it's 824 Yeah, I just want to say some, one thing to the folks out there. Don't you laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we could re maybe we could restage that last uh, blooper <laughs> right here on right here on the stage tonight. Well, uh, Norman, we have a little special surprise tonight for you—a little a little uh, honoring to you that we understand is um, part of what maybe Russ would do with you uh, when, when you guys had so special memories and special celebrations. And so in, in honor of that, Paul's going to bring you something from us to just say we love you. Yes, we and sure do. And we honor you, appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> when, we, when we were talking, Marianne said that Dad always gave you pink roses. Oh. Always gave you pink roses. So I didn't remember what color, but they're pink. But... <laughs> This is just from my heart, because I know all the lonely times, all the hard times, the times that nobody was looking, the times that only God knew what was going on, that you were faithful. And from the board, the directors, to the staff, to everyone here, to all the partners, we just want to thank you very much. You're very loved. Amen. Hallelujah. I never know what to say at a time like this, but after watching those videos and, um, you know, laughing and having fun, I just hope that Russell and Olene mm -hmm. and Ron have yes, seen right. a bit of this tonight. I just hope. I don't sure know for sure, but I remember them. We all do, and we miss them. Amen. Mm -hmm. But we're so glad you're here. <laughs> Whoops. And we're, and we love you, and we appreciate God sending you, oh, and humbled. we appreciate your obedience in yes. coming, because you could have said no. <laughs> well, we're glad to be part of the family, and it does, it is a family, and it, as you've heard many people tonight say that this is a family, you're part of the family too. You may never have been here. You may never been in the state of Pennsylvania. You know, we have viewers all over the country and really all around the world. Mm -hmm. And you, you may say, well, I'd love to come and visit. Well, we would like for you to come and visit too. But, but we're in your living room every day. And we're glad to be in your living room. We've got big changes and excitement coming in the fall. You know, there's some new programming coming in the fall that we're very excited about. You want to stay tuned. Next week, a week from tonight, we start the, the, uh, the telethon in the spring with special, 10 special speakers, 10 special musicians, 10 nights of program. You don't want to miss it. Mm -hmm. You really don't. You want, because it's life-changing, it's world-changing, because it's the truth of God. Amen. It's going to teach it in a way that you're uh, going to hear it new. And You know, God always brings a new word to us. That's what the rhema of God is. It's the new word 
from the Spirit. And there's a rhema for you tonight. Please, please know that we want you to call and be, if you have a prayer request, pray tonight. Call 888-665-4483. We want you to pray. That's why we're here. We're here, we're here for them, aren't we, Norma? Amen. Yes, we, we are. Sure are. Yes, we are. You know, with all that's happened today, the other stations can report the news, but we can be open for prayer for people to call that are afraid. Amen. And we want to uh, encourage you, if you're one of those people, we want you to call because we care about you. It's, those are not just words. We do care about you. And more than that, God does. That's right. That's right. And so if, if we can be of help to you in any way through praying for you, we want to do it. Give us the opportunity. It's a blessing for us to be a blessing to you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thanks for, thanks for watching with us tonight. We're, we're glad that you're here. Tell, tell your friends about Cornerstone if they don't know. Tell your church about Cornerstone, and we will, we will move forward in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's, let's take this time to welcome Dean and, and, and uh, Mary. Mary for her, their, their last song. You guys have been great tonight. Amen. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you guys to come, Don and Terry and Norma, Paul and Faye, would y'all come, and all my little choir back here, would y'all just stand, help me here. Any of the Cornerstone uh, leadership, uh, Tom, uh, yeah, Marianne, Marianne, quick, 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 quick. We just have a couple of seconds here. But I, I think that it would be, uh, I think we need to sing uh, to the Lord right now. We need to give him some praise. Give me some honor for what he's done in the last. Has God blessed the Cornerstone family? Has God blessed you? With his blood, he has saved me. With his power, he has raised. Come on, let's stand together. To God be the glory for the things he Oh. Uh -huh.